everything's turning into a crab and scientists have no idea why. This is the, unfortunately very hyperbolic, public takeaway from the theory of carcinization. Now, the accuracy of this is debatable. First off, in terms of evolution, you shouldn't really say something turns into something else, but that's chump change compared to the real inaccuracies of that statement. If you're watching this and you don't know what I do on this channel, now is your last chance to click away before I ruin your childhood. Or maybe you're not really as attached to crabs as I am. Doesn't matter. Here's the story. First off, what exactly does carcinization entail? Well, it's more of a phenomenon than a theory, and it essentially refers to how the crab body plan has independently emerged five times. What do I mean, the crab body plan? Well, the plan alluded to can mean a lot of different things, but the definition used in this 1997 paper by Patsy McLaughlin and Raphael Lemaitre is that it has a wide, flat carapace, and its tail portion is crammed together and squished into an under the carapace. Another common characteristic is that the plates on the bottom of its cephalothorax are fused together into a single plastron, but that's mostly incidental to the shape change. It's this body plan that has evolved five times. You may note that this is pretty specific, and that's intentional so, because here's carcinization's dirty little secret. When people say everything is evolving into a crab, this is what they assume is meant. Multiple clades across the animal kingdom have independently selected for crab-like bodies, so two nearly indistinguishable animals might be on opposite sides of the tree of life. That, unfortunately, is not the case. Carcinization, as a scientific term, only affects lobsters in the infraclass Animura and causes them to evolve into crabs. For those who don't know, Animura is the outgroup to Brachiura, the clade that includes all true crabs. Animurans are already 90% of the way to being a crab, and the rest is just a small change. Ultimately, a more scientific statement would be lobsters in the order Animura are turning into crabs, and scientists have no idea why. Carcinization is less comparable to all animals evolving into humans, and more into all monkeys evolving into apes. But still, the crab body plan has independently evolved five times, right? Well, the four times an Animura it has evolved are the king crabs, porcelain crabs, sand crabs, and the hairy stone crab. But what I would argue that McLaughlin then Lemaitre failed to consider is that I got some hairy stones for you right <clears throat> this is not one of the body plans listed this is officially called a squat lobster and it's not a crab but if you saw it on the beach you wouldn't call it a lobster you would call it a crab it looks like a crab it's got a flat wide shell and a short tail the only difference really is that the tail isn't tucked under the carapace if it's not clear by now the definition of crab and carcinization isn't strong at all in fact it's a rather arbitrary set of measurements a false crab whose measurements fall very close to the cutoff point could be said to have evolved and devolved into a crab thousands of times over its evolutionary history. Essentially, what we have is further from all apes evolving into humans and closer to all apes independently evolving to be bipedal. Now, our most true statement would be the tail length and body shape of lobsters in the order Animura have varied significantly over time, and scientists have no idea why. And that's the thing, scientists do know why. Let's go back to the beginning when I said that you shouldn't say that things are turning into other things. I think we all know how evolution by natural selection works, but I'll summarize it because it's fun. Small mutations occur from one generation to the next, and if a mutation grants reproductive success to its holder, usually by improving its ability to survive to reach sexual maturity, then that gene is passed on to more offspring. Over time, the genes that grant the most evolutionary success come to make up a larger proportion of the population. If we take carcinization to mean the unrelated success of genes that cause the individuals to resemble crabs, then the explanation for it is obvious. Because it worked. If we accept that turning into a crab just means rounding the shell and shortening the tail, it shouldn't surprise us that the gene has independently emerged multiple times, and if we accept that at the end of the day, all animurans are trying to accomplish the same things, well, we all are, but specifically, false crabs all live a very similar lifestyle, then it shouldn't surprise us that a similar shape has worked for all of them. Mind you, we don't know exactly what it is about the crab shape that makes it so successful, but we can make some educated guesses. It typically relates to the pleon, another name for the tail. A lobster can flick its pleon forward, which launches it backwards to escape predators. The pleon also needs to be very flexible to allow for this, meaning it has to be lightly armored with disconnected plates. Some brachyurans might have, if you'll excuse the tear zooism opted for a defense-based build rather than a mobility-based playstyle. That being the case, it would be more effective to drop the vulnerable pleon and use a less aquadynamic but more defensive shape. But it could be something else. Maybe a round shape allows them to more easily duck into hiding spots. Maybe predators have learned to avoid crab-shaped animals because true crabs are dangerous. 
Maybe a round shell allows for a bigger uterus that allows for more eggs to be laid at a time. But what we do know is that the common ancestor of all false crabs was somewhere between a lobster and a crab, and it was much more effective to just pick one and stick to it. Well, except for the hermit crab, which didn't lose its pleon, but rather covered it by poaching a shell from an unfortunate mollusk. Finally, our true statement is complete. Lobsters in the infraorder Anamura have found it advantageous to shorten their tails and widen their shells, and scientists are uncertain what about this design makes it so evolutionarily successful. Okay, but what about horseshoe crabs? You can argue all you want that the standard definition of carcinization doesn't fit the mold people have placed around it, but you can't deny that having a round, flat shell is unusually widespread. Cyclids, an extinct species of crustacean, horseshoe crabs, arguably trilobites, and pubic lice, which cause an STD known as crabs. Do these not count as crabs? Well, I would argue that that's too broad of a definition. If a crab is just a flat, round shell, then yeah, any creature that can would like to have a large, round shell because it happens to be effective against many shallow water predators. And if a definition can be so broad, then snakes, legless lizards, chyselians, anelids, and nematodes could all be considered worms. Is everything evolving into a worm? No. You are not a fossorial animal, and you are not going to evolve a body that works for a fossorial lifestyle. You are also not an intertidal scavenger, and more importantly, you have an internal skeleton, so you are not going to evolve into a crab. And it's worth noting that, while the crab has independently evolved five times, it's independently devolved seven times. So maybe, like nasals in language, crabs are destined to go extinct.